Hey everyone, welcome to Victory Church Online. Thanks so much for joining us today. Be sure to have your Bibles ready, get your coffee, if it's the morning when you're listening to this, and just get ready for an incredible message. Check it out. All of you that are watching online, we just welcome all of you. We're so glad that you're here with us. I mean, it's the holiday season. It's Christmas. How many of you are excited about Christmas? Amen. Hey, have you bought all your presents yet? How many of you bought all your presents? Amen. You know, I want to let you know, I mean, I am so at peace. I mean, I've got no pressure on me whatsoever because I got all my presents bought in January. I did for two years in a row. I mean, I've got no pressure at all. You, don't, you want to know what I did? Jeannie and I decided we were not going to give, e- give anything to each other for the last two years, so it's made it real easy on me. Come on, somebody. Yeah, I like that. Now, she has to go buy all the presents for the grandkids and everybody else. Thank God for all the ladies in the house. Let's give them a good hand. Amen. Hey, before I jump in there, let me tell you about Boudreaux. You know, Boudreaux, when he was younger, he wanted to get in the ministry. And so uh, they assigned him a little task. They wanted him to go to a nursing home and go visit one of the elderly ladies that was in there, Miss Jones. And so he goes there, and I mean, he's nervous as a cat. He didn't know what to do, what to say. And so he gets in that room, and she's sound asleep. And she said, he doesn't know, what do I do? Do I wake her up? And so he's so nervous, and he's shaking. And, and uh, he starts, he sees a bowl of peanuts right there by her bed, and he starts eating those things, waiting for her to wake up. Well, about 15 minutes later, she woke up, and he realized he ate every one of them. He said, Miss Jones, he said, I'm so sorry I came to visit you, but I ate all your peanuts. She said, that's okay, honey. I done sucked all the chocolate off of them. That's Boudreaux. All right, we're in an incredible series called God With Us. And if you don't get anything else out of this series, I hope you get this one thing, is that God really is with you. Can I hear something from you this morning? He's not some distant God who ignores you, who's toying with you, is dangling a carrot out in front of you. I mean, he's not concerned about, you know, he's a God that's called you, he's delivered you, he has freed you, he is with you from now until eternity. And to prove it, he sent his son to you to prove that he's with you. He is God with us. Let me just read this to you, Matthew 1, verse 23. It's been our verse. It says, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Now, I want you to grab hold of this. Jesus' name would be called Emmanuel, which is God with us, not man with us, not an angel with us, but God himself with us. He was affirming us, inviting us, and reaching out to us with his very own son. And with that name, I hope you see what God was trying to do. He was trying to say that I'm going to come here in the presence of a man. He's called my son. He's a savior. You know, his name is Jesus. That means savior. But he would be called Emmanuel. Listen, I'm God with you to save you, to redeem you, to restore you, to reconcile you, to pull you up out of the ash heap that you couldn't pull yourself out of. That's why I am with you. Is there anybody here today? Am I talking to the right people? Do you know what the word Emmanuel really means? I know know we just read it, God with us, but there's a deeper meaning to that, a deeper understanding. I was studying this because that name describes the role of Jesus. It describes the role of Jesus to bring God's presence to his people. That's really what it means. It means that God has united or joined himself with you. I mean, I'm talking about every fiber of your being. He has come to join himself with you to continue with you from now until the end, to comfort you, to enlighten you, to protect you, to guide you, to provide for you. In fact, the only way I know how to explain this to you as I was trying to study this is to try to get an image in my mind what it meant. What does Emmanuel mean? It's not just God with you. It's God in you and for you and on you. And I just kept getting this image of a blender. And we're, we, I mean, God put us in the blender, and guess who jumped in the blender with us? God himself, and the Holy Ghost punched the button, and we ended up getting joined together and blended with God. I mean, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, God is with you, and this ought to be encouragement for some of you who feel like you're all alone in this world. Listen, you don't have to go through this life by yourself. 
You don't have to take one step by yourself. God is here and God is with you. And I saw something else in these scriptures that really kind of jumped out at me. Maybe it doesn't mean anything to you, but I'm telling you, when I saw this, my, I tell you, my faith leaped to another level. You know, we just read the verse that said, you know, that, that Jesus, you know, he was going to be, you know, he was going to come. She, a, a virgin would be with a child, bear a son. They will call his name Emmanuel, God with us. He's called God with us, meaning that God is right here. He's with us. But if you get to the last part of chapter 28 of Matthew, that's Matthew chapter 1 I just read. If you look in Matthew 28, right before Jesus ascended, he said something really interesting. He said, I am with you. In the beginning, God said, uh, you know, God is with us, but Jesus made it personal. He said, it's not just God with us. He said, I want you to know I'm with you. I'm with you. Somebody needs to hear that this morning, that God is with you. He just isn't with you in the beginning, but he's with you through everything you go through in this life. He's with you in the end of this age. He is personally with you, that I am with you. And I don't know what more God can do to convince you that you're not alone. I don't know what else he could say to you. As I say, when I saw this, it just deepened my faith because I realized no matter where I go, no matter what I do, no matter what I'm facing... No matter what trials, temptations, no matter what sunny day or dark day I'm in, he's with me. I mean, I'm just kind of blended in with him. I can't get rid of him. Hello, somebody. You can't get rid of him. You can't shake him off. You can't kick him out. You can't can't tell him to go for a hike. It's not going to happen because he's in you and he's with you. You're not taking this journey alone. Listen, not one step. Am I alone? Not one. That's my consolation. That's what helps me get through life. It's what will help you get through life right now. You know, uh, God is with us in every season of our life. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Matt was talking about the presence of God in valleys. That, you know, we find God on the mountaintops where we get intimate with God. We really know him in the valley. Last week, Pastor Jonathan spoke about God in the wilderness. That God whispers in the wilderness, and he whispers because he's close. You know, if he was hollering at you, it shows you that he's far away. But it's the still, small voice that he speaks to you to let you know, I'm not far away. I'm right here. And this morning, I want to talk to you about the third thing about God with us. God is with us in the storms. He's with us in the storms. How many of you are in a storm right now? A financial storm, a relationship storm, a, a storm with your kids or with your job or at work or, or, or a depression storm, something going on in your mind. You know, sometimes we, we find ourselves in a storm and, uh, that we didn't create. How many of you are in a storm? Let me see hands. Let me see your hands, really. Okay, everybody look around. You're not by yourself. There's others in storms with you. And sometimes those storms create stress and anxiety, and we just hope the storm goes away. Am I talking to anybody? Does anybody want the storm to go away? I want the storm to go away. When we're in a storm, we say, well, where is God? Why have you left me? Why am I here all alone? You know, what's happened? Why is it happening to me? You know, storms are inevitable. I'm not talking about just real storms like rain and thunder, but I'm talking about storms of life. They're inevitable. I mean, they're, that's the truth about storms. Here's the truth. You're either in a storm or you're coming out of a storm or you're about to get into a storm. Thank you, Pastor Mike. That was so encouraging. I saw, that so helped me. But isn't that true? I mean, some of you are in the middle of a storm right now. I saw your hands. Some of you just came out of a storm and thank God. And some of you are about to enter into one. It's the cycle of life. Cycle of life. And let me give you just one key thought for this message right now. A storm does not mean that God has disappeared. You know why I know that? Because he's God with us. He's right here. He's right with you. Jesus said, I am with you. Always. Even to the end of the age and the end of time. Never allow the presence of a storm to cause you to doubt the presence of God. Did you hear what I just said? Just because there's a storm doesn't mean there's not a God. 
You know what I've learned about God? He loves me. He loves you. you know, we mess up, don't we? We screw up. We, we do stupid stuff. We say stupid things. Am I the only one that's like that? <laughs> I just want to make sure. I'm feeling a little alone. <laughs> but you know what? I'm not really alone because I've got the almighty God who's with me through every storm that I'm in. I want, to look at, I want to look at a story here in the Bible, and I want to share some important things that might help you to understand God is with you. It's in Acts 27. Let me give you a little backstory. story. Uh, Paul had been accused of sedition, heresy, you know, speaking against the law, the same things that they accused Jesus of, and they crucified him. And so all the religious leaders wanted to take him. They wanted to kill him and all these things, but because he was a Roman citizen and a, a, a Jewish citizen, he appealed to Caesar. And so to Caesar he went. So he was on his way to Rome and uh, to, to, to head to that trial that he was at. But on that journey he encountered what seemed like a never-ending massive storm. This storm went on for weeks, not just for a few days, but for weeks. You can read about it. They didn't eat for two weeks. I mean, it was so desperate. The winds were so bad. The waves were so bad. The storms were so violent that they began to throw the tackle and the cargo and everything off the ship, just trying to stay afloat. And honestly, they all thought they were not going to make it. They were not going to survive the storm. But let me pick this story up right here in Acts 27 and in verse 20. It says, now, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small tempest beat on us, all hope that we would be saved was finally given up. The storm was raging. And they had finally just kind of come to the conclusion, the conclusion that we're not going to make it. We're probably going to drown and we're going to die. That might describe you today. The storm that you're in. It's raging. The winds are howling. It's been dark days for weeks, maybe months. And you're wondering, am I ever going to survive this? It's never ending. And you're losing hope. And you're so tired of the storm. You just want to find a way out of it. You know, I talk to people all the time that want to give up hope. They're in a storm. They want to quit. I'll never beat cancer. I'll never get out of debt. I'll never conceive and have a child. I'll never make it in life. Everything I try never works. I hear that from people all the time. And the storm rages. And they give up hope. If that's you, what do you do? How do you know God's really with you in a storm? I'm going to share three things with you out of this story that might help you. Number one, God will speak to you in a storm. When you're in a storm, it feels like God has left you. But how, look, how can God leave you when he says he's with you? Can you please explain that to me? You can't get rid of him. He's with you. He hasn't gone anywhere. The storm doesn't change the location of God. He's right here right now. He's with you. Always. Do you know what God will do in a storm? He'll speak to you. And if you'll listen, it will encourage you and help you. He wants you to know that he's with you. That's why he speaks to you. He might just give you a little word. And the reason why he gives you a little word, he just wants you to know, I'm right here. I ain't going anywhere. I'm here. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've been in a storm. I've been backed into a corner and things look hopeless and impossible. Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. That may be where you're at right now. And I'm just thinking, I guess this is it. I'm a human just like you. But God will speak one little word into my heart. And suddenly it's like a surge of energy, of faith and confidence that rises up in me. Because I suddenly realize I'm not alone. He's with me. Just like he said he was. Emmanuel, God with me. You know, the storm was raging with Paul and it looked hopeless, but God spoke to Paul. Let me read verse 22. But now I urge you to keep up the courage. And that's what I'm here to do today is to try to help you to keep your courage and keep your confidence. Paul was saying, I urge you to keep your courage. He said, not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night... An angel of the Lord, whose I am and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, in the storm, 
God said something to him. He said, don't be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. I want you to grab this. In a storm, in a storm, God will speak to you to give you courage. This happened to me this week. I was traveling. I spoke at a church in Jackson, Mississippi. And after that, I do my annual hunt, you know, with that pastor, he and our friends. And, and so we just do, I do my annual hunt. Well, I was a little concerned because I had been hearing about this bad weather system that was going to come in. And, uh, and so, you know, this approaching stor- storm, I knew it was going to ruin my travel and ruin the rest of my week because it wasn't a normal storm. They were predicting flash floods, six inches of rain, tornadoes. I mean, there was warnings everywhere. Everything was getting shut down. I mean, it was not a normal storm. And they said it was going to, it was going to, the storm was going to come through and it just stay right over the top of Jackson, Mississippi. And my first thought is, you know, I can't do that. I, my schedule is so tight. I've got to get out on Wednesday when my flight is normally going to be. And, I, and I'm sitting in the hotel room on Tuesday evening. It's late in the evening, and I'm th- sitting there, and, and I'm thinking, okay, what do I do? I mean, I, I've got to get home. I've got, I've got to get ready for this, ser- this sermon, this message. I've got so many pressing matters. My schedule was so tight. And really, I was just sitting in that hotel room, and I was, I mean, to be honest, I was, I, I was panicked a little bit. And I got to feeling a little desperate. Anybody ever feel that way? Your pastor feels that way sometimes, too. And I felt like I was stuck with no options, and I was under pressure. And there I was that Tuesday night, sitting in the hotel room, and I began to realize I'm not going to be able to get out. It may be Friday before I even leave because of this storm, or maybe even Saturday. And so in that chaos, in that moment, in the storm, I was sitting on the edge of the bed. Lord, what do I do? Now, I know this doesn't seem like a big deal to you, but I felt like I was in a storm. I said, Lord, what do I do? And in that moment, I heard a word. I said, do I stay? Do I go? What do I do? And I just heard a little voice say, go. See, I heard that voice because he's right there. And so, I mean, I began to, I started packing stuff up. I didn't know what I was going to do. He just said, go. <laughs> so I made some phone calls. I got somebody from the church to pick me up. I checked out of the hotel. I've only been there for four hours. I checked out of the hotel, left my key sitting right there. And I had them take me to the airport. There's no flights. To a car rental places, 15 minutes before they were going to close, I went to every one of them and I found one car rental that would rent me a car one way. And I drove to New Orleans about three hours away in the rain, in the storm, in the wind, not knowing what the next step was. Well, I found a hotel room and I ended up calling the airline and I was able to buy a one-way ticket home the next morning and I got out before that storm really got bad there. And like I said, I don't think that's that big of a deal to you. I mean, I, I didn't even realize I was going to get emotional over that thing. That was weird. <laughs> but you know what? When you know God is with you, he's with you in the big storms. He's with you in the little storms. He doesn't care. It's because you've been blended into him. He's been blended into you because he cares about you. He cares about everything in your life. When I cried out to him, you heard me in the storm. And when God spoke to my heart, I knew he was with me. I want you to know that in the middle of the storm that you're in right now, if you just say, Lord, what do I do? I'm totally convinced that he'll speak to you. He will. He will lead you and he'll guide you. He'll whisper into your heart because he's not far from you. He's right here. Look, my, my little story is not life and death, and I know that. And, uh, but for, for me, I felt like I was in an uncontrollable storm. And every, every little thing matters to me. I guess it matters to you too, but it really matters to God. 
The first thing I discovered about what God will help you to do to prove himself that he's with you in a storm, he'll speak to you. The second thing, he will help you get through a storm. I've learned that God might not calm the storm, but he'll help you get through a storm. You hear what I'm saying? I mean, I felt like I was in a storm and God really helped me get through it. And I hope you get this one thought that you're never alone in a storm. And that's what I discovered, too. I'm not alone in a storm. He's with me. He's Emmanuel. He's God with us. He hears your cries. He hears your prayers. I want you to look at this. Paul said, he said, he said, an angel of the Lord stood beside me. He said, an angel of the Lord who represented God stood beside me in the middle of the storm. As I was thinking about this, that this week, I was thinking about my children when they were growing up, and I'm thinking about my little grandchildren. And uh, we've got my daughter, her husband, living in our basement with our little one-and-a-half-year-old and four-year-old. Somebody say, help Pastor Mike. <laughs> <clears throat> but it's been such a joy. They're, they sold their house. They're going to be moving. And until that happens, they're going to be living with us. And, uh, but I think about them. Sometimes I'll say, why don't you take my hands, and we'll walk or cross a road or we'll go someplace out where they, maybe they could stumble or fall. And I don't want them to because... You know, I want to protect them. And I was thinking about that's how God is to get you through the storm. You know what he does? He reaches down out of heaven and takes you by the hand. Now, when I give my hand to my my little children, grandchildren when they were little, you know what it does? It gives them confidence. They have peace. They know they're protected. And most importantly, they know that I'm with them. That's what God's trying to do for you right now. He's trying to grab you by the hand. To walk with him. An angel of the Lord stood beside me. Why? To grab your hand. Why? To help you get through the storm. Why? So that you know that God is with you. I hope you're really, I hope you're getting this because no matter what storm you're going through, God is standing right here beside you. He's right beside you. And I love what, I love what Paul said in 2 Timothy. He said, everyone deserted me. 2 Timothy 4. Everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord stood by my side and gave me strength. You know what he was saying? He said, God took me by the hand and he gave me strength. You know, David said in Acts 2, 25, he says, I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. He's holding his hand. He's holding your hand. Whatever the storm you're going through, I'm going to tell you, he'll he'll whisper in your ear and he'll help you get through the storm. How? Because he's with you. He'll speak to you. He'll take you by the hand. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. God sent his son, Jesus, your savior, who's called Emmanuel, God with us. You know, it's all about who's with you. Let me ask you the question. Who's with you right now? Who is with you? Who's holding your hand? One of the greatest comforts I have in a storm is a promise that Jesus made to me. John 14, it says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. The word comforter is, it's a Greek word. It means one called alongside, one that comes and stands beside you. Why? To hold your hand, to prove that God is with you. In fact, many times in the scriptures, it says he's the helper. Why? He's trying to help you get through a storm. Why? By grabbing your hand to prove that God is with you. Come on, is anybody in the house today? I'm trying to encourage you. The comforter, the helper, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. You can't get rid of him. A third of the Godhead lives on the inside. Have you ever grasped, have you ever grasped hold of that thought at all? It doesn't matter if the storm is from your stupid decisions or somebody else's stupid decisions or just because the devil's trying to attack you, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter what happens on all those kind of things. I just know that God is with us. Jesus, Emmanuel, Jesus with us, the Holy Spirit in us, the Father uh, uh, for us. You can't fail. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. I love what Jesus said, John 14. He said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. To grab you by the hand, to whisper in your ear, to get you through the storm. Because I'm not just anybody, I'm with you. Always, even to the ends of the earth. 
Look, no matter what you try to do to get rid of, rid of God, you're not going to get rid of him. You can try to kick him out, push him out, run away from him. It's not going to happen. He's going to be right there. He's with you always. One thing I discovered about God, he never gives up on me. Ever. No matter what I've done, what I've said, what storm I've created, he just doesn't give up on me. He's relentless. He pursues me. He's after me. He loves me. He cares about me. And by the way, it's not just me, it's you. He loves you. In the storm, Jesus is, in, Jesus is in front of you. He's beside you. He's around you. You're surrounded and go off, absorbed by his presence. And I don't know what storm you're in or you feel swallowed up in, but may I just remind you one more time and encourage you and admonish you that God is right here and he's holding your hand. Let me give you the third thing. He'll speak to you. He'll help you get through the storm. And he wants to show you that storms don't last forever. Paul was in a raging storm. It lasted several weeks. He got shipwrecked on an island. They were cold. They were drenched. They were shivering. But they lived. They made it through the storm. The storm ended. You know, when you're in a storm, we never think it's going to end, but it does. Like the scripture says, this too shall pass. It'll pass. It'll go away. You know, when I flew out in that storm on Wednesday, the skies were blackened. The wind was howling, as I said, and I get in that plane and it took off. I'm going to tell you, that plane shook. As we were flying through those clouds, I mean, it shook violently. People were scared. But you know what? In just a few minutes, we cleared the clouds and the sun began to shine. You know, it's not about the outlook. It's about the uplook. It's not about looking out at the storm. It's about looking up to the one who's with you, who will never leave you. Some of you are looking at the storm. Can I just challenge you to quit looking that way? And why don't you start looking this way? You know, Paul knew something about storms. <laughs> and, you know, he had plenty in his life. There had been 40 assassins trying to kill him. He was stoned, beaten five times, imprisoned many times, shipwrecked three times. He was in perils of his countrymen in the church, out of the church. He was in danger. Poisonous snakes bit him. He was beaten by rods three different times. I mean, Paul knew something about storms in his life, natural and spiritual. But here's what he said that I love. I, I, I lean on this all the time when I'm in a storm, 2 Corinthians 11. He said, for our light affliction." I love how he frames his life of storms. He said, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working uh, uh, for us a far more greater and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, outlook. But the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. That's uplook. He said, he said storms are just light affliction." They're just here for a little while. I know they feel hard. I know they feel difficult. You don't know what to do. You feel panicked. You feel like you're under pressure and a lot of stress. Listen to me. He'll speak to you in the storm. He will speak to you in the storm. He'll grab you by the hand. Help you get through it. Because he loves you. Because he knows that the storm will not last forever. You know, Paul knew enough about life and God to know that no storm or rough weather really lasts for very long because he knew God was with him. Let me just close with this other story of a storm. You know, Jesus told the disciples to get in the boat and they were going to cross the sea to go to the other side. I know you know the story. And while they were in that boat, Jesus was asleep below deck. And this storm begins to rage. These seasoned fishermen and seamen became so fearful with the wind. I'm telling you, the boat was getting swamped with waves. How would they make it? How would they survive? And they, they, they went down below and they woke Jesus up and they said, Don't you care that we're going to drown? Don't you even care? And Jesus said, Why are, are you afraid you have little faith? It's interesting he'd say that. Because he comes up on deck and he looks at the wind and the storm. And he said, peace, be still. And suddenly everything became calm. 
You know, that day the disciples discovered something that I hope you discover. It's simple. Is that Jesus was in the boat with them. That's why I was saying, why, did you, why don't you have faith? I'm with you. Where's your faith? I'm with you. Some of you feel like you've lost your faith. Can I tell you what? He's with you. He's in your boat right now. And he can stand up and help you get through the storm. That's what he does. That's what he does for a living. That's his call for you. Peace isn't in the presence of a storm. It's in the presence of Jesus. Is he in your boat? I guess the question is, are you in his boat? That's the big question. Peace came because Jesus was, was with him. Emmanuel. God with us. Jesus saying, I am with you. How many of you are in a storm again? Can I see your hands? I've been desperate for this moment to pray for you. I want to ask you to do something. I'm going to get our worship team up here. I want to ask you to do something. If you're in a storm, would you just stand up right where you are? I want to pray for you. Just stand up. You don't have to be embarrassed about it. We're all in storms from time to time. You're either in it, going through it, or you're about to get in one. This is the moment I've been praying for. It's the moment I've been looking for. You to God are the most important thing right now. And he wants to whisper into your ear. And I want you to get this image right now in your heart that he's got you by the hand. You're not going to drown. He's got a plan for your life like he had for Paul. And you're going to get through this storm. Father, I thank you right now. I thank you right now for the people who have taken the courage to stand up in a storm. Some that might be struggling saying, where are you, God? Where are you? Well, Lord, I know you're right here. Jesus, you said, I am with you. You made it personal. For everyone here, you're for them. You're with them right now, this moment. Lord, by your great and mighty power, take the hand that the universe is held in and grab their hand right now. The mighty, powerful hand of God that demonstrates that he's with you. Whisper into their ear that demonstrates and proves that you're with them. Lord, help them through this storm right now to prove, Lord God, that you've never left them. And by the power of your spirit, I'm praying that you will begin to cause confidence and faith to begin to surge in our soul and surge in our mind. And as we leave this building in just a moment, Lord, we're going to walk with joy. We're going to walk with expectation. We're going to walk with a belief, Lord God, that we never walk alone. We never live alone. We'll never take another step alone because you are Emmanuel, God, with us. Come on, Lord, we give you praise this morning. We just acknowledge that you're our King and our Lord. Come on, church, let's give God great praise right now for what he's doing in our lives. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. You can be seated for just a moment. There is never a service that we, that we will not take a moment to ask you this question. Are you right with God? You know you're going through life in a boat by yourself. Why? It's so hard. Not when you have somebody who loves you. He's not judging you. You know what the gospel is about? The gospel is about redemption, restoration, renewal. You know, there's not one person in this room that's perfect. Have you figured that out yet? That's why there's no perfect church. Because we're here. But here's the great thing, the great news for you. This is the good, what they call the good news. Is that God sent his son to prove that he's with you. Not to beat you up. Not to crush you and push you down. But to lift you up. And to dust the dirt of this world off of your knees to let you know how important you are to him. He sent his son to die on a cross to take all of your sins, all your mistakes, all of your failures, so he could do one thing, so he could be with you forever in eternity. If you're sitting here this morning and you've not made that decision, or you're watching right now for wherever you're at in the world, wherever you're at now, 
and you've not made that decision to invite Jesus into the boat or to step into his boat, would you be willing to do it now? This is your moment. Christmas is here. It's about Christ who was born of a virgin. His name shall be called Emmanuel. God with us. Would you take a step and be with him this morning? Bow your heads for just a moment. Would you slip your hand up and say, Pastor, I don't want to wait another moment. This is the moment I'm waiting for. I want to get in the boat with Jesus. Slip your hand up and say, that's me. Amen. Amen. I see. I see some hands. Anyone else? Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate. What about you online? Let us know. You need to get in the boat with Jesus. You're ready to take that next step because you need him in the storms of life. You can't do this by yourself. You don't want to walk alone. You've been doing it for so long. God's not here to judge you and beat you up. God is here to restore you and save you from the storms and let you know that he is with you always. Anyone else? Last moment. Make that decision. My Lord, my God. As the storms rage around us, Lord, we know that we'll never escape storms of life. We're in a chaotic world. And Lord, we try to live our life on our own, and we know that we can't do it successfully because we don't know how to get through the storms. We're fraught with anxiety and stress and pressures, and we can't get rid of them. But Lord, we know someone that can is you. And I acknowledge today by the lifting of my hand that, Lord, I'm not right with you. Taking this journey alone, I don't want to be alone anymore. I need you to restore me and save me. I need you to pull me out of the storm. I want you to whisper in my ear, I love you. I want to hear those words, I love you. I need you, I want you. That's what we need to hear today. Lord, I'm praying that you'll grab each person by the hand. They lifted their hand, so reach down and touch that hand. Give them the security and knowing that you've never been far away, you've always been right here. If you lifted your hand, I just want you to say, Lord, I want you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. And today, I'm getting in the boat with you. And I believe that this man named Jesus, Savior, is also called Emmanuel, God with us. And I thank you, Lord, for being God with me. In Jesus' name. I hope this message challenged you or just encouraged you in some way. And if it did, be sure to share it with a friend. Throw it on social media, text it out to someone, and we're always here for you. You can follow us on social media at Victory Denver and for Pastor Matt at The Matt Ware. We hope to see you next Sunday at 10 a.m.